It's 50 years since four young men from just up the road in Liverpool released their first record. But there's a lesser known and more poignant Beatles anniversary this year, the death of former band member Stuart Sutcliffe. Now thanks to family and friends, Stuart's becoming famous, not because of his time with the band, but because of his paintings. It's a tragic story of what might have been. These paintings are seldom seen. They form a unique legacy and offer a rare and tantalising glimpse into the world of what might have been. The work of an artist just beginning to realise his talent. Some now say that the young man who painted these abstract images could have gone on to become a household name, to rank alongside those of Picasso or Jackson Pollock. He was an innovator not just in the Beatles style but in his own uh, field you know he he p basically painted his feelings and you look at those sort of later works he was on something and the fact that he died at such an early age was a tragedy really because he could have gone on and achieved so much more Stuart Sutcliffe was just 21 when he died at the time he was experimenting and pushing at the boundaries that constrain art he was a young man who had everything to live for until fate intervened He's known to many as the fifth Beatle, the boy with the James Dean looks and a sense of style, who played bass guitar with the Beatles during their time in the seedy nightclubs in Hamburg. But tonight, we'll be revealing another side of Stuart, the boy who was born to paint. And that's all he ever wanted to be, you know. He never, ever had an ambition to be anything else. When, when parents ask children, and what are you going to be when you grow up, He'd always say, I want to paint. And he did. These works were done in the last year of Stuart's life. I'm told by people that the red ones come across as angry and fiery, and the dark ones as sombre and almost like a, a death knell. And that's not my perception of them. One could say that, you know, they're dark, sombre, tones but they are so uh, balanced and uh, so beautifully executed did he know he was going to die are these his last statements well they may be Stuart was born in Edinburgh in Scotland in June 1940 but moved when he was three with his family to live in Liverpool it was obvious from an early age he was a gifted artist. You know, the whole process of watching an artist work was so familiar to me from a little girl because he used to sketch me quite a lot. In fact, we all were sitting ducks and sometimes he'd get fed up and say, oh, leave us alone for heaven's sake. And so he'd sketch us from behind where we were sitting, you know, so he wasn't so in our face. But it's interesting because my sister and I never occurred to us that that was unusual. And so to actually sit in his room before he had a studio and watch him work, which we both did, we, we enjoyed it. We thought it, there was something really rather wonderful about it. Because of his talent, Stuart was allowed to leave school and join the Liverpool School of Art when he was just 16. It was here he met John Lennon and the course of his life would change forever. Stuart became the driving artistic influence on the Beatles from the way they dressed to the way they appeared on stage. He left them in 1961 to return to his art studies after becoming engaged to Astrid Kirker, a local photographer. He died from a brain hemorrhage in Hamburg in April 1962, just months before the Beatles had their first hit with Love Me Do. John Lennon would never get over his death. Stuart's paintings are looked after by his sister Pauline at her home in the Hamptons near New York. She helps run the Stuart Sutcliffe estate. It was set up to preserve and promote the numerous works of art, letters, poems, drawings that he accomplished in such a short, tragic life. Pauline lives surrounded by her brother's work every day. Well, it's a great privilege to have such amazingly good artwork. I mean, I could not afford to buy this artwork. I mean, that's, it's, it's such a privilege. 
I think it's right that people are catching on to Stuart now when there was a period where he was sort of overlooked. Uh, people that appreciate art can understand what's going on in those paintings and how much validity he had as an artist. So the fact that there's a resurgence of interest in his work and the value of his works is fantastic. Christian Furr is one of Britain's most respected artists. He's put together a unique exhibition, Liverpool Love, featuring this painting by Stuart Sutcliffe. It's at the Museum of Liverpool. I think when you're an artist, you're constantly experimenting and you're constantly trying different things out. And you can see that to a certain extent in Stuart's work. And who knows what he might have achieved, like uh, five or ten years down the line. You know, this was just one period in his life. And I think the way that his mind worked and how innovative he, he was meant that he could have gone on to completely surprise us with something else as well later on in his career which is why it's a tragedy that he, he died so early, really. Beatles fans have always been interested in Stuart, but for many people he was a remote, forgotten figure. But a new book, In Conversation with Stuart Sutcliffe, his life, work and relevance, released to coincide with the 50th anniversary of his death, features much of his artwork that's never been seen before. And he now has his own website. It's been the catalyst for creating huge global interest. A new generation brought up on the internet is learning all about Stuart Sutcliffe, the artist. I couldn't even conceive of the meaning of it because for a while I wasn't um, social network savvy. And so it's only when uh, people say, do you realise there's 3.5 million hits today on Yahoo or Google about Stuart? And I'd say, you must be out of your mind. No, come have a look. And then, of course, when the Facebook page for Stuart was set up to commemorate his death on the 10th of April this year, and we now have 259,000 likes, and someone said to me, well, go and Google so-and-so, and that will give you perspective. And we Googled somebody else who's well-known, and they had 2,000. I thought, wow, now I get it. People want his work, and they've almost stopped mentioning Beatle too much, and they talk about him as an artist, and they critique him as an artist, not as, uh, well, he painted quite well for a Beatle. It's become a very small world, and he's a very big part in it now. It's, it's marvellous. And if you want to see any of Stuart Sutcliffe's paintings or any of the others, that exhibition runs until the 25th of November at the Museum of Liverpool. Well